This was the 23rd of September, 2001, 12 days after 9-11, the worst one-day disaster in American history since Pearl Harbor. And here's George Tenet, the director of Central Intelligence at the seat of power in Washington, D.C., who's calling in the middle of the night, halfway around the world, completely bypassing the, the entire chain of command to ask some sleeping field operative what we ought to do. If you didn't know we were in trouble before, you knew it now. So I, I, I said, look, look Mr. Director, I, I'm not sure we're, we're thinking about this in just the right way. You're asking me about military tactics. In the end, this is a political problem. Yeah, we probably have the power to chase international terrorists out of Afghanistan. But who's going to keep them out? At the end of the day, what we need to have is a competent political authority able to assert its control over Afghanistan that will do what we can't, and that is to keep it from again becoming a safe haven for international terrorists. If the Taliban is willing to be that government, well, then so much the better. They're there, and they're controlling most of the country. And if Mullah Omar, the head of the Taliban, is not willing to change policy with regard to bin Laden, then there are others in the leadership we know who may be willing to step in and do just that. And if we can't convince the Taliban as a whole to do what needs to be done, then we have to smash the Taliban, and we have to do it in a way that will enable us to bring something else in its place. So whatever military means we use, we have to sequence them and calibrate them in such a way as to get us to where it is that we need to be politically. So as I'm going through this recitation, he's, he's taking notes and he's stopping to ask me questions. And I, I said, look, Mr. Director, this, this isn't going to work. This is taking too long. Let me try to write all this down. So he said, good idea. Now, remember, this is early Sunday morning, my time. It's late Saturday night, his time. He said, it's 11 o'clock. The helicopter comes from me at 6. I'm going to be getting up at 5. Can you get me something by then? So I said, yes, sir, I can. So I drove as fast as I could into the office. I hammered out a, an eight-page message in about three hours. By this time, my senior lieutenants were coming back in. And so I circulated it to them, and I got some good input from them, made the, those changes, and sent it back, again, completely bypassing the chain of command, and sent it to tenant security detail and said, hand us to the director as soon as he gets up. And as far as I was concerned, that for the time being was the end of the story. I had no idea what was, what was going to happen after that. But he did wake up, and they gave him my piece, and he looked at it, and he circulated copies to the other members of the War Cabinet, to Cheney and to Rice and to Rumsfeld and Secretary Powell and, and Chairman Myers. And they discussed it that day at Camp David. And then the following morning, Monday, they met with the president and laid it out for the president, and the president said, done. This is our template going forward. And the next thing I knew, Tommy Franks, the combatant commander for the region, was getting me on the phone to do a, a video conference because he'd been ordered to make sure that his battle plan conformed to my paper. This was absolutely extraordinary. This is simply not the way things normally work. Well, it said that no plan survives contact with the enemy, and this plan was no exception. 